Hey everybody, I'm Joe Kellinger. Uh, I'm a real estate investor and entrepreneur. And we put these videos together every week to give you all the tips and insights from my experience over the last several years. So uh, make sure you tune in and subscribe. And uh, thank you. We're going to touch on qualifying your um, investors, tenants, potential tenants, and uh, from an agent's perspective, and then from the other side, where as you're a um, tenant or potential buyer, why you'd want to have your uh, agent qualify you. So I think this can be a great topic for you to learn from. Uh, I know it can be a touchy topic. Nobody likes to ask about money, right? Well, some people don't mind, but you know. Um, it, it really uh, it, it's a necessary evil in our in our business so um, Hannah why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself the market that you serve um, and what you're up to sure Hannah McCarthy I'm a commercial real estate broker and I've been in the business for six years and I have been in real estate for 12 I do tenant representation a landlord representation and investment sales in the Los Angeles area what, uh, what made you want to get into real estate? The first six years I worked with an investor in-house uh, for like a, a family and we bought and sold and managed our properties uh, just for that one family. So it was very interesting to start there and then move over to the brokerage side because you get to see what it's like to be yeah. a principal and the way you think about things, which is a lot different than the way brokers think about things. Well, in this this topic, it's very key to the success of a real estate agent, as well as an investor and, and potential tenant. So, um, now, I know that you kind of take it to the next level. I was talking to your assistant, and I understand that you have a list right next to your phone. So when somebody calls, which I'm guilty of, when somebody calls, I was I used to do brokerage a few years ago. And uh, when I was doing it, if somebody would call, I'd get all excited. I just think, you know, I want to get them booked and start showing them stuff. Probably not the best move to make, right? Correct. Qualifying is extremely important and it will it make or break your business. I think it's not talked about so much, and for some reason, it's not actually taught uh, right. widely. Uh, and it is the difference between you making money and not making money. And you. I mean, unless you want to work for free forever and learn this lesson all by yourself, hopefully this video helps you to use your time wisely and work with people that are qualified to work with you. Um, so Exactly. Now, where did you come up with your list? Just from experience in the industry or? Actually, I was on some type of webinar and while I was listening, I just started writing notes super fast to okay. make this list and I keep it by my phone because I get very excited when someone calls and I get into the conversation and sometimes you forget to ask the most important questions and you can't really call someone back and say, you know, oh, I forgot to ask your budget. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you can't forget that. Um, so if you have a pen and paper, you might want to write these down because time tested. Yeah. And we'll have uh, our marketing person add them to the, the video. The first one is specific needs. This is very obvious. Most people do this. You almost have to do this. Right. You just want to find out, do they want to buy, sell, lease, what type of product, and you want to know as much information about it as possible so that you're not looking for, uh, so you can narrow down the criteria and send them a list of 20 properties versus 100 properties. Uh, the next one is urgency, and this ties into, do they really need need to work with you? Do they need something? Are they in a 1031 exchange? Do they need to purchase? Do they need to sell? Um, are they a tenant who's completely grown out of their space and they have people sitting on each other? That's the urgency factor and it's very important. Um, the next one is time frame. How fast do they need this, this requirement met? Pretty easy. Another one is budget. And a lot of people don't like to ask about this, but you have to because you need to know if their idea of what they can buy or lease is in line with the market. Right. And you need you need to know that while you're searching. Now, are you including the TI work? 
or are you just for the, you're looking at the rental amount or you're looking at an entire budget right full budget full you budget. want as many details as possible about this um, it kind of leads into the next one which is experience uh, someone do they have experience in commercial real estate have they bought and sold before have they ever leased anything before right. this is going to be huge um, because it takes away the education factor that we need to complete well, with it yeah with this someone is somebody, who's new. they have a new business concept so let's say somebody does come to you with a new business concept how far out I mean you do two years tax returns three years tax returns business plan this is uh, it's technically a requirement of the landlord so you right. would ask the landlord what they would like um, I think industry just, standard would be two years tax returns okay. a P&L a balance sheet, maybe the first few pages of a couple of bank statements, whatever the person feels comfortable sending over. It's okay. always the more the better. Bios, press, anything that makes this person sound exciting to a landlord or a seller would be, okay. you know, again, development. Um, a lot of developers who are selling land or people who are selling land won't sell it to a developer who has no experience because there could be long contingency periods and this person just may not be able to get through the city process to get right. there. Um, so yeah, experience matters, credit matters. If you're gonna get a loan, please get pre-approved because that means we can find the property that you want and move on it and not go through. <laughs> it always happens that you find the property, the, maybe it's the first one and they're not ready and someone else gets it and it right. happens to be the best one that you find. And then you never hear about it down the road. Well, that first property was perfect. You do hear about it. Yeah, you you will hear about it again and again. Uh, another item is authority. Is the person you're speaking to the decision maker? Now, they don't have to be the decision maker, but you need to know who that person is, and you need to make it clear that at some point you will need to be speaking with this person, especially once you get further down the line. Um, you know, the first step is sending pro is the due diligence work. But, you but once do, you've identified a property. And you do show somebody, like if they send their assistant out to look at properties, you're okay with showing the assistant in the beginning, correct? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Because many people who do commercial, who transact in commercial real estate are very busy and important people. And they usually have somebody to do the legwork for them. Right, yeah. And then once you've identified the top properties or even the one, uh, they would go out and see it then, which okay. is very normal. The last bit is compensation, and you need to decide, work out the commission, work out best case and worst case scenario, and decide, is is this worth your time? And it's kind of a, it's, a it's like one. a subject that you don't really want to talk about, but the truth is, I don't make any money until we have achieved your goals. So when you buy your property that you want, when you sell the property, when you, when we finish the transaction, it is completely finished, and you have gotten what you wanted is the time that I get paid. Right. Which is great, because it's a win-win. I'm on your team, I'm very invested in you. Mm -hmm. Very, because I'm working for free. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that that's the whole reason for qualifying, is finding someone who can go the distance with you, that you have the surety of They'll close. close the transaction, yes. Exactly. Okay. Um, let's take a look at it from the other side. If I'm an invest investor or a potential tenant, why do I want to have my agent qualify me? The simple answer is you will be on my mind. I will be thinking about you. If I know specific details about what you want um, when it comes up, you're thought of first. When you're very vague and you don't give someone enough information to go on, it's easy to to forget about your requirement. And it also means that your requirement may not be that serious. Um, the best agents qualify. And if your agent isn't qualifying you, it's kind of like you're just on the phone wasting time with somebody. Oh yeah, you're just gonna go in the bin with you know 10,000 other people that when they put something up right. that fits these vague parameters, they're just gonna email it to you. They're not gonna sit down and look at the property, break yeah. it down for you and send it. So it's actually a waste of their time. My well. favorite is I'm looking for value add, any product type, any budget from Santa Monica <laughs> to downtown. Or I can't tell you how often deal. I hear that and it's like, 
I'm not really sure what to do about right. that. I, I'm sorry, but uh, there's other people that are, say I'm looking for a specific property in this exact spot, and yeah. that's who I'm thinking about. When pocket properties come up, you're not first. Yeah. The yeah. people who say, I'm in a 1031, I have urgency, I have, I know my budget, I have experience, all of, all of the things on the list, those are the people that I think about first when I have exceptional, exceptional real estate deals. Well, they're so. a real client. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, they know they want. That's what makes them a real client. Exactly. So, um, so you want to make sure that your agent does qualify you, and the good ones will. So, um, Hannah, thank you very much for coming in. Of course. Now, everybody, if you, I'm going to put Hannah's information connection, uh, Instagram maybe we'll do. Sure. Um, we'll put Instagram down here, if you know it off the top of your head. Sure, it's at Hannah McCarthy underscore C-R-E. Well, there you go, she knew it. Um, I don't know that I know mine <laughs> off the top of my head. But uh, anyway, thank you for tuning in. Please do subscribe and check in every Wednesday as we're putting these videos out every Wednesday. Thank you.